Hello. Today we're going to discuss the field stripping procedure for the Winchester Model 63 22 caliber rimfire rifle. The disassembly procedure will also work with the earlier 1903 version. Uh, the big difference, there are three guns, of course, the 1903, which is a 22 Winchester automatic caliber. There is the original Model 63 Winchester. And this is a later version of the gun made in Japan by Moroku. The biggest difference between the three guns is the manner in which the forearm cap is attached and the type of attaching block underneath. We'll get to the differences as we go along and uh, other than this, the assembly procedure is identical for all three guns. So let's get started. Of course the first thing you want to do is check the rifle, make sure that there's no cartridges in the gun. This is done by pulling the uh, loading tube off the butt stock of the rifle. Tilt up make sure that no cartridges come out. Then you want to use the plunger located up on the fore end to check and make sure there's no cartridges in the chamber. Next step is going to involve separating the two parts of the rifle. There is a, This is a takedown weapon. You have a lower assembly and you have an upper receiver assembly. You can take these apart very easily using a screwdriver or a coin to loosen the securing screw. Unscrew it till it comes off the back. It is secured so it won't fall free. Separate the two halves by pulling back on the lower receiver and pushing forward on the upper. You don't really need to take anything apart on the lower receiver. This can simply be wiped down. This also shows the very simple mechanism of the weapon. This is your feeding port here, mainspring, hammer assembly that fires the gun. Very, very simple operation. This makes this one of the uh, more reliable of the early semi-automatic 22 weapons. Getting into the main field strip. As I said earlier, the big difference between the guns is the earlier versions, the foreign cap is retained with two screws on the sides of the cap. Later versions have a single screw running up through the bottom. You'll use a screwdriver to remove the screws, of course, side mount screws. On this particular weapon, it's been modified with a, a sling swivel stud on the bottom. Uh, the original production has a screw running up through there. So you use a screwdriver. In this case, we're going to use a small punch to remove the swivel stud. Go ahead and take that out. Then we're just going to ease the fore end cap forward. This will allow the cap, the cocking plunger, and the cocking plunger spring you pull forward off the front of the weapon. The fore end can be removed by simply pushing forward on it, lifting straight up. We've zoomed in at this point to show you the block. You'll notice that this block is solid. On the earlier rifles, this block will be open. This lower there's piece down here won't be here. It'll just be a simple U-block. And it'll be set back a little further on the barrel. On the earlier guns, the 1903s, it may impede with uh, removing the guide rod. If so, you may need to, to uh, remove the this block using a non-marring punch and a hammer. Just tap it off. It's a good idea to take a pin punch and make a little divot on the front and on the barrel so that when you put that this block back on, you get it aligned precisely to the point where it was. So I recommend you do that before you go ahead and remove it. At this point we're going to go ahead and remove the guide rod using a, a screwdriver. Simply free it up. Then you can use your fingers to unscrew it. Because the spring is under compression, it's a good idea to put your fingers down on it and maintain control of the spring while unscrewing the rod. And once the rod is free, you can pull it forward through the block. The spring itself, just ease up on it. And let it come free. And then to remove the bolt, very simple. Push back, 
lift up on the bolt until it comes out of the back of the receiver, then lift up on the front of the bolt carrier and pull it free. At this point, you got enough access to the receiver to go ahead and clean it. Uh, I recommend using nylon toothbrush, scrub the bolt, scrub the inside of the receiver. And I also prefer to use a, some type of a pull through as opposed to a rod. I would uh, rather clean a rifle, any gun for that matter, from the breech to the muzzle instead of the other way. That reduces any wear on the muzzle. All right, reassembly is basically reverse order. Simple to do. You want to make sure that your bolt is facing upright to the rear. Insert the carrier and make sure it aligns through the front of the receiver. Bring it forward and just allow the bolt to come forward into the upper receiver. This is probably the trickiest part right here is getting the spring and the guide rod back in place. The easiest way I found to do this is to take the guide rod, run it down into the carrier block, get the spring aligned onto the guide rod, bring it forward like so, then just fold the spring up like this and press it down and this will form a little bit of compression on the spring and allow the guide rod to, to uh, channel itself right back to the securing hole. There we go. Simply screw it back in until it bottoms out. Use your screwdriver to make sure it's tight. Okay, next we want to reattach the forend. Just set this down. You may have to fidget with it a little bit to get it aligned properly. Now you can lift up slightly and forward. Take your cap, your plunger, and your plunger spring. Align them through the through hole. I'll take this off so you can see. This spring will sit on this screw, the guide rod screw, and the plunger itself will fit down over that guide rod screw. And you want to make sure this is aligned. On the earlier guns, because this sits back further, they have a hole drilled up into the guide rod itself. You can use a tool like the back of a, of a punch to push that spring forward into the plunger. Use another small punch inserted into that hole to keep it in place. And then as you bring this down onto the guide rod, as soon as you get to this point here where that lines, then you can go ahead and remove the tool and the spring will snap down. That will keep everything in place on the earlier guns. It's not necessary to do so with the newer versions. We'll go ahead and remove or install our forearm. Slide the cap down in place. Insert our screw or our swivel stud, depending on what you have on there. Press down until it aligns. Screw it in place. And tighten it down. I also use the punch to kind of get an alignment on the uh, the swivel uh, stud, make sure it's aligned correctly. All that's left to do at this point is to install the two pieces back together, just done by simply pushing them forward onto each other. Screw the steering screw in place, lock the two pieces together. Give it a little turn with a screwdriver or a coin. And we'll reinstall our magazine tube. Quick function check. And we're set.
These guns intimidate a lot of people initially, but they're really quite simple to take down and maintain. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.